All right, kind of looks like I'm gonna have some editing to do. I didn't realize that these uh, didn't just keep on recording. So looks like my cameras both stopped recording part way through getting that cover off. So as you can see, I got all the cover bolts off. I made a stencil. I hope that shows up there. I made a stencil out of the uh, out of the packaging the gasket came in, and put uh, put each of the bolts in the stencil so I know where they go. Did not have to completely disconnect the uh, clutch rack from the cover. Just have the cover lying on the ground there. Probably should put a towel under that to protect the chrome. And the, uh, the gasket came off, uh, well, it hasn't come off the bike yet, but it came off the uh, cover in more or less one piece. That's not the factory gasket. Put your cover there, let me back that out there. Okay. So there's the, uh, here's the clutch cover off. This is the release rack right here. Yeah, and I know I should be wearing gloves and touching oil. All right. When you go to reassemble this, remember that these teeth have to be facing the rear of the bike. That uh, would be the rear of the bike, back in that direction. All right, seven clutch bolts got to come out. Coming out should be no problem at all. I'm going to replace them all only because they're uh, 95,000 miles on them. And who knows how brittle they've gotten over all those years. 18-year-old bolts. Um, every other one of these is a different size. All right, got a long and a short. And the manual is going to tell me which ones go where, but I think I'm going to mark my longs and my shorts. Uh, maybe I'll put a mark on the long one and no mark on the short one or a mark on the first one I take out and every other one and I'll match them up with the new bolts. I'm actually going to replace the bolts and the springs as well as each of these clutch plates and each of these uh, clutch discs that are in between. Uh, the, the driven plates and the drive plates as they call them in the manual. This is the crankshaft, the end of the crankshaft right here. This drives the outer gear here. This is constantly in motion when the engine's running. This part of the clutch basket either is turning or not turning depending upon whether this pressure plate is pressing in as it is now under the tension of the springs on the clutch or when the uh, clutch rack is pushed in, pulled out however it goes when the, uh, when the clutch lever pulls. Uh, it pulls pressure off and, and disengages the pressure between these plates and that's how the, uh, that's how the clutch on this right. thing works. We're going to take the remains of the, the Previously changed gasket off, and this one is coming off much, much more easily so far than the previous one. You just want nice, clean mating surfaces to accept that new gasket. And that one came off almost pristine. Look at your gasket when you take it off. Look for any parts of it that are missing. And that's where you know you have to look and uh, scrape them off one of the two mating surfaces. Be careful when you're doing that scraping, guys. This is, uh, this is aluminum. Most of our scraping tools are steel don't want to put a gouge in that cast aluminum, you will cause yourself a leak. The gaskets are there to prevent. Now, the service manual on, uh, on page 317, when it talks about removing the clutch and everything, talks about removing the oil jet, which is this, uh, this little doohickey right here. There is no reason to remove that oil jet. You change the clutch out. Absolutely no reason at all. Right, so we're just going to clean this up a little bit. Kind of gently scrape off any last little bits of gasket that I see here. I apologize for the trees, but I like the breeze, so there's going to be some shadows in and out of the picture. Nice breezy afternoon to be sitting outside working on the back. Just wish I didn't feel like hell. <laughs> Honestly, I'd rather be at work making money, taking care of people. And do this, my bike isn't going to get sick from me being around it. You guys aren't going to get sick from watching this video on YouTube unless you get sick of hearing my voice, which is entirely possible, but that's why God made the mute button. Turn the sound down. Still some good things to see when you watch. I'm just scraping up a little bit of uh, a little bit of gasket that got on the head of there, and I think I'm going to get away from using a knife and just use the tip of a flat blade screwdriver. I did not use a whole lot of gasket adhesive the last time I put this back together, but I always do put a thin coat of gasket adhesive when I put a gasket back on a surface like this. It just helps to keep the gasket from flopping around while you're remating all the surfaces. And it kind of ensures a successful remount and reinstallation. This would be the one place I must have gotten a little overzealous where it's a hot spot. This gasket's on there good and tight. Or maybe a little dirt got in there from the top. Maybe it wasn't made as well as it should be, and a little dirt got in there, and that's why the gasket's on there tight. A little 
bit. There it goes. It just peeled off. Okay. A little bit I see here. That's gone. We're going to take a paper towel at the end of this one to dry all the uh, presence of any oil off these mating surfaces, too. This is pretty clean, though. I'm happy to see that. Right before we put the thing back together, we'll, uh, we'll check those mating surfaces to make sure that they're all good and clear. A little bit of gasket stuck on here. That's coming off. A little bit gets into the engine. Take the tip of your finger, wipe it out. It's not going deep in there. Don't make a lot of metal filings. That would not be a, bit, a good idea. Okay. That's why I'm saying just, pry, just scrape very, very gently. You don't want to Scrape the aluminum up. You don't want to mess up those mating surfaces. You don't want aluminum filings floating around in your motor for what should be obvious reasons. If they're not, probably not uh, ready to be watching DIY videos on YouTube, to be honest with you. Okay. That's a pretty clean surface. So clean that all up. Let's see if there's anything left on there that needs to be cleaned up. And there's probably a, a better way, and I can imagine there's the folks out there that. Professionals are doing this that know a better way of cleaning these things off than I do and probably tell you all I'm doing it wrong and that's fine. The next part of the job is the important part. This is just the, the getting there. Let's scrape a little more of this off of here. I apologize for the loss of the video during the uh, removal of the clutch cover, but you really didn't miss much if you can figure out how to clutch cover off. All the instructions in the service manual, page 3-17. Start removal of that clutch cover. Little finger sweep in there to make sure I don't have anything, uh, any debris laying in there. Not a bad idea to do. Again, clean off any bits of the missing gasket. Take a look at the old gasket if you still have it handy. I tossed it someplace. Here it is. Both sides. Make sure there's no bits of gasket missing. That'll be the clue where the gasket's still stuck on the motor. All right. Clutch bolts, long bolts, short bolts. This is going to be, yeah, remove the clutch bolts diagonally is what they say, remove the clutch plates, that's on 3-17. They also refer to a tool known as a rotor holder, which you absolutely do not need to use to do this job. Um, and uh, somewhere, I guess it's on the clutch reinstallation, which is uh, right from 3-54. We're going to go to that service manual next. Leaves out of there. Leaves blowing around still. It's not fall, it's springtime. Leaves are blowing around. Springtime motorcycle working time. Alright. The grace may have wrong on those pitch Let's see here. There we go. Clutch reassembly. Alright, so in terms of putting the clutch bolts back, um, the manual refers to the A bolt and the B bolt. If you look at the longer and shorter lines that are etched into the clutch plate, A bolt is one click counterclockwise. So this will be the A bolt, this will be the B bolt. So A is to the right of the short line, to the left of the long line, when you're looking at the top, where it's the A bolt is counterclockwise from the long line, clockwise from the short line. So A bolt's between the short to the left of the A bolt, long to the right of it, and the B bolt is the uh, bolt that is clockwise of the long line, counterclockwise of the short line. Um, the A bolt is a length of 40 millimeters, so that's the longer one, and the B bolt has a length of 33 millimeters, so that's the shorter one. So we know the long bolt is the one that has the long line clockwise of it, if that makes sense to you, uh, or is counterclockwise to the long line. Clockwise, long line, long bolt, short bolt, short line, long line, long bolt, long line. That's how that should work when it comes out. I'm still going to put a mark on each and every one of the long bolts with some of that handy dandy fancy pink stuff. I'm not reusing these bolts, but that'll just tell me where each of the bolts goes, okay? I'm going to actually put it right on the pressure plate. So I'm going to wipe some of the oil off of here. Make sure that that nail polish will at least stick. We're not going to get crazy with it because I don't want all kinds of foreign materials floating around the inside of my engine. This is a clutch release rack. Remember, it just pivots, floats around anywhere it wants to go. It's just floating in there. That's going to come out when we take the pressure plate off. Um, just keep in mind that that uh, clutch release uh, rack has to be facing the back of the bike when we're done with this uh, ready to reassemble part of the project here. So we're just going to mark bolt and bolt and bolt and bolt and 
and bolt, and bolt, because I'm going to match these bolts up with the bolts that I've got, and a bolt, and a bolt. Suzuki's, they use these eight bolts, these eight clutch bolts, two different lengths, four of each, and they use, uh, they use, uh, in the factory stock, use two different length clutch springs. You do not have to use two different length clutch springs. In fact, the eight Vesra SK329 clutch springs that I'm going to be installing in this bike are all the same length. All right, now I believe that's a 12 millimeter, might be a 14 millimeter bolt. Let's take a look at that here. That's a, uh, it's smaller than a 12. Know, that it's really loose. It's smaller than 12, might be 11. Smaller than 11, might be a 9, or a 10, let's try a 10 first. 10 millimeter, ingo bingo, okay, remember these are very, very light duty bolts, they will snap, they will break, when I put them in I torqued them down to 84 inch pounds, which uh, translates to uh, 7 foot pounds, 7 times 12 inch pounds is 84, so 84 inch pounds, which is the uh, correct torque for these bolts, not an inch pound more, because they are as soft as butter guys, just remember that. As far as taking them out should not be a problem, you should be able to pretty much take them out with uh, with a regular old ratchet, uh, but we will be putting them in with a torque wrench. Uh, torque wrench by the way, right here, handy dandy, inch pound torque wrench, works very nicely, keep the pages on my service manual from blowing around in the wind until I need it. And uh, remember I told you about putting the tools back so you know where they are? There's my uh, three quarter inch or my uh, three eighth inch ratchet. Let's get rid of that socket for a minute. Put it aside. That's the one for the uh, oil bolt. All right. And I'm gonna put an extension on here. I have another extension. Just because I like being a little bit further back away from my work. I'm gonna take out all the unmarked bolts first so that you give a chance for these to dry. And it's just they come out real, real, real easy. So these are the shorts. This should come out as a short bolt. It only has a few turns in there, and it comes out. There's a bolt, a spacer. We're going to keep the spacers. We're reusing those, and a, and a spring. And you're going to notice the ones I pull out. I have the Vesra SK329 springs in there. Those are the stock, uh, the non-stock lengths. They're the, all the same length. These clutch springs. If you're taking yours apart for the first time and it's stock from the factory, it's going to have shorter clutch springs, uh, or shorter springs on the shorter bolts. So in case. Uh, I didn't mention it before when the video quit. It's a little basic theory of operation here. Obviously these are the cylinders. These go, pistons inside the cylinders go up and down through the crank turn. This is the uh, primary drive gear. They turn this primary drive gear. This primary drive gear turns this secondary drive right here. This gear is always turning when the engine is running. This is the clutch assembly. This part, the outer basket of the clutch assembly, also turning when the engine is running. So this gear and this gear are together at all times. The clutch plates, which consist of the friction plates that I showed in the beginning of the video, and the metal uh, uh, metal uh, clutch plates, or clutch discs, they are the uh, they are the parts that uh, bind together to drive the uh, to drive the transmission, which is driven through a concentric shaft in the center of this whole assembly. You'll see when we get it apart. So when I get the rest of these clutch bolts out of here, we're going to take the pressure plate off and take the uh, release rack out. And we're going to start taking out plates, friction plates, clutch plate, friction plate, clutch plate, etc. Until we get all the way to the inside, and then you'll be able to see inside there. I'll take some close-up shots. All right, I'm going to continue taking out the short bolts first. And I'm only taking the short ones out first, just to give the nail polish. I put on the long ones a little time to dry. Now remember, a dot is where the long bolt goes. For when I put this back together, remind me of that, okay? That's where the long bolt goes. The only things I'm saving when I take this apart are going to be these spacers. So I'm taking the spring off, which is the Vesra SK329 spring. I'm taking the spacer and I'm keeping the spacers, but I'm going to chuck the bolts and the springs. I'm, and the, uh, the washers, I believe, come with the new bolts because they're captive. They won't come off of there. I'll have to look through my parts. But before I throw anything away, obviously, I'll make sure I've got everything I need. And, you know, I'm spare set of bolts because these bolts are about as soft as warm butter and they do snap easily 
and uh, I could certainly run an old boat in here but if I didn't have a boat when I broke one I had to take the clutch apart get the bolt out I'd like to have another boat put it back together so I can ride my motorcycle in case you folks didn't realize it I am from New Jersey kind of get my redneck accent on when I'm narrating YouTube videos apparently seeing as I've narrated exactly one YouTube video in my life Old Springs so it's not a put on maybe it's just the fact that I'm getting in the mood for Maggie Valley in a couple of weeks down here in North Carolina putting some miles up and down the gorgeous roads of the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains and the Great Smokies there and uh, all the mountains in between and, uh, putting some miles on my new clutch right. yeah, we'll make some videos of that four spacers are, are aside I don't know, leave the spacers together with the bolts because I don't know if the other bolts, the spacers are longer or not. Let's see, the service manual says bolt for the A bolts, bolt's 40 millimeters long, spring is 25.85, and the spacer is 24. And for the B bolt, the uh, bolt is 33 millimeter, millimeters long, the spring is 24.5, so it's a shorter spring, but the spacer is 24. So the spacers are all the same length, so the spacers are identical. So it doesn't matter, we can mix them up. Okay, we're going to take the long bolts out now. Loosen them all up to mount my head. Almost look like I knew what I'm doing. I hope. <laughs> you know how many clutches I've changed in this motorcycle? Zero. I have the clutch apart once to do the springs and that's it. Never change a clutch in this thing. So once we get past that pressure plate, I'm not certain 100% what we're going to see in here. But I've watched some other YouTube videos, so I'm an internet expert now. I may not be a motorcycle mechanic, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express some time during my travels. All right. And I think I'm generally pretty good at this stuff. For those of you that know me from the MIG forums, the MIG mailing list, or Facebook page, Eric379. we will find that Eric379 is out with the long bolts over to the left side, just so I know where they're at. Short bolts over to the right side. Um, you know my favorite expression then, if you know me, is that the only mechanic I trust is the one to work on my motorcycle anyway. Well, maybe there's two. Maybe there's Terry over there in Bristol, the Vic Ranch. Well, because I've watched him work. The only other one's going to be the one that's got the wrench in his hand passing it to me when I say, give me that 12 millimeter. No, I said 10 millimeter, damn it. Give me the wrench I want. Seriously, I like to do my own work. This is therapeutic. And those of you that know me also know that I can use all the therapy I can get. Okay. Last of the bolts are out. Dun, dun, dun. If all you were doing, by the by, is a spring change, it's actually time to get your springs out and start reassembling things. There's a little bit of wear on some of these spacers. There's no doubt about that. I, I might have had a thought about it, I might have ordered some spacers as well, but I didn't. So We'll have to go with the ones we have. Uh, another 95,000 miles when I'm ready to do the clutch again. I'll take it apart. I'm going to stick my fingers in these holes and see what happens. Alright, pressure plate. And there's springs in there. All the clutch discs want to come out. Alright. So there's the pressure plate, boys and girls. That's the outermost piece. Okay. This is the release rack. That goes in here inside the pressure plate. Right. Everybody can see that, I hope. That's the pressure plate. First friction disc comes off. That's going to go in the garbage. First drive gear, this is the one that actually drives. You can start to see the inner teeth on these drive the inner part of the clutch mechanism. Right. First drive, it's surprisingly very little wear on these for 95,000 miles on this motorcycle. All right. These are pretty well toasted though, they're worn down. People that know me also know that I ride my motorcycle fairly, uh, I won't say aggressively, let's just say with a spirited pace. Okay, so the first four sets, first three uh, friction plates and the first four metal plates want to come off in a hurry under spring tension, but then you can start to slide the other ones out. 
I don't know why I'm separate now, because they're all getting thrown out. Place it all on them. A little sticky stuck together. It is a wet clutch. It's going to be stuck together. It's going to be everything stuck and sticky. Right. Yeah, you may need a dental pick or a little small tool of that sort to get the last couple out of there. Let's see what I got in the toolbox here. Sure, I got a little something. A little something, something will do the job. If it's in the way of the video, I'm sorry. I'll push it out of the way in a minute, I promise. Uh, just got to find a little something, something to get it out of there. A magnetic attractor, which is magnetically attracting all kinds of different things. Are these steel? Nope. Well, the wave washer is, but I don't want to take the wave washer out. The wave washer can actually stay there. So that's the last friction plate, which is the different friction plate, by the way. Um, that's the one you don't want to, that's the one that needs to be taken out separately. Pop the screwdriver in behind here. Slide this out. Alright. Wave washer may need to come out with it. There's a small washer. I don't know if you can see it in the video or not. Uh, it didn't need to come all the way out. Okay. This is a thicker, different plate. It's smaller in diameter. Look at these plates. You can see. Turn around the other way, opposite the way they're installed. You can actually see that there is a, a little bit of the uh, difference in the size. This plate goes in this way. This one is thinner because it has to go around that wave washer that provides the spring tension against the, uh, against the clutch. So if I did this right, I should have seven clutch plates and six metal plates. When we go to this cell, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clutch plates, and I should have six discs. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. There's a little bit of scoring on these, and a little bit of, little bit of discoloration, a little bit of wear, but not much considering the number of miles that are on this motorcycle. So what do I say? Thank you, Suzuki. You built a, a quality product. And one day when I get a wild hair and get crazy again, I might just have to buy another one. All right, these are gonna, I'm gonna trash because I'm replacing these all with new parts. But for the moment or three, I'm just gonna put them aside over here with the engine cover gasket. I'm going to take my gloves off, change my gloves, get another glass of water. I've been narrating a lot here. Change my outer gloves. I got smart and started double gloving. My other line of work, my full-time uh, job, double gloving, is required in certain circumstances. And I suppose changing motorcycle clutches might just be one of those circumstances. This, by the by, is the wave washer. This provides some of the spring, the back tension to the spring clutch. It's called a wave washer because I guess it's wave-shaped. It's got a a curve to it, and then there's a flat clutch washer. It's all the way in the back here. All right, you can see that uh, that flat washer. We're not changing those. You don't have to. You can see this part turns because I'm turning the transmission right now. This part connected to the engine. All right. That wave washer back on there. That's what's going to make my clutch work again. 